Hello everyone, hello teachers, hello boys and girls. As you know, in a few days we are going to celebrate Veterans Day on November 11. So I have a special guest here for you. I am with Mr. White and today we'll be talking to Mr. White about his time with the military. Let me introduce you to Mr. White. Hi everyone. It's a pleasure to meet you all, even though it's on a video like this. So my first question is, which branch of the military were you in? I was in the U.S. Army. That was the branch that I was a member of. That's great. When did you go into the Army? I, I went into the Army in 1962. I was... Uh, 18 years old when I went into the Army. I went in March of 1962. It's when I actually entered and went into uh, basic training. Wow, 18 years old, Mr. White. Tell me about when you went into the Army. Well, I was, like I said, 18 years old. I was going to school at Weber College in Ogden, Utah. And I left uh, in March of 1962 to go to Fort Ord, California, which is near San Francisco. And that's where I did my basic training boot camp. San Francisco, it must have been very nice. Well, I said San Francisco because that's easy for everyone to recognize. It was actually a few hours from San Francisco south. And you could always tell where Fort Ord was because Everywhere in the state that you looked, you saw sunshine except one spot right off the ocean, and that was Fort Ord. And there was always clouds and rain and miserable weather at Fort Ord when I was there. Okay, please tell me what you experienced there. Well, it was a different kind of lifestyle for me. I was... Uh, born and raised and stayed in the same family until I was 17 years old and then I moved away to go to school. So going into the army was um, a bit of a culture shock. There was uh, a lot of, of rules and a lot of, a lot of regulations that were imposed upon us, a young man at the time. And um, it was hard because when you're that age, when you're a 17, 18, 19 year old, you think that you don't have to follow any of the rules. But there are a lot of rules that you learn in the Army, but there's a reason for that. It sounds like you were really busy, Mr. White. Did you like it? Well, in the beginning, I didn't like it because when I first got to Fort Ord to boot camp, they issued our clothing and our shoes and our shirts and our underwear and everything that we needed was issued to us. We all lived in the same barracks. We all looked the same. We all dressed the same. They shaved our hair off so that we all looked the same. We went uh, on a regiment of a special diet to help us put weight on, lose weight if we had too much fat, to, to build us up to be strong, healthy young men. We did a lot of um, training every day. I think we got, I'm trying to remember, but we, I think we got up around 4.30 in the morning. And the first thing that we did, uh, all of us, we made our beds. And our beds had to be made a certain way so that the, the blanket on the top was completely flat. And when the sergeant would come in and do an inspection of our bed, he would flip a quarter, and if it didn't bounce high on the bed, he would tear the bed apart and tell us to make it over again. So I went through a lot of those kinds of things when I was a young man learning about discipline, learning to follow instructions, learning to follow orders, and going through a lot of training while I was in basic training boot camp that, that was hard initially, and I didn't like it initially. But eventually, I started to learn why they were doing that. And it, it changed my opinion about what was going on with me. Wow, well, Mr. White, that sounds very interesting. What did you do after your boot camp? Well, um, I finished boot camp. We, during boot camp, we learned a lot of basic things, like I 
just mentioned to you, we learned about uh, life and we learned why the Army has these regulations that they, that they impose upon you. And it's because they're trying to create a cohesive team of people that all work together. And in the Army, it's, it's not unlike a football team or a basketball team or a soccer team or something. You're part of a team. But in the Army, your life depends on each other doing something um, to make sure that everybody is, is safe and sound all the time. So what, what they teach you is that even though they're barking uh, orders at you, it's to get you to react immediately without thinking. You know, many times when someone says, you've got to do this, you've got to do that, we want to think about it or talk about it or argue about it. But in the Army, they teach you that you can't do that, especially if you're in a battlefield situation where someone's life might depend on whether or not you act or don't act. So after I got through basic training, I went through what's called AIT, my advanced infantry, infantry training. And there I went through a myriad of different things. I, well, I learned how to climb telephone poles. We used to string wire to run the, the, uh, the, the telephones. In those days, we didn't have cell phones. There was no cellular business. Everything was by a wire. Uh, and into a switchboard. So we would climb the poles, run the, uh, the, the telephone lines to wherever we had to go, and then run them back to a base camp where I, we would connect and hook up a switchboard so that the people in the base camp could talk to the people out in the, wherever, the, wherever they were. So I did that. We, I did some advanced work with um, learning to shoot. I did work with uh, codes secret codes, we had a machine that would type codes. In those days, we, we didn't have computers. Everything was done on hand, so we would send messages that were coded so that the enemies, if we had enemies, couldn't decipher our codes. So I also learned to do that. And then I did training. I was uh, kept at Fort Ord to do training, special training, and I did that for the remainder of my time at, uh, at Fort Ord and, and on. What would you say to people today about the military? Well, I, I think, in my opinion, um, I think it's important uh, to understand that the military is a good thing for young men and young ladies or young women to learn the art of discipline and the art of teamwork and the art of, of working in a cohesive group to accomplish something. It's easy to say from the outside uh, what doesn't work or they've got a, you've got a better way, but when you get a whole group of people all designed and geared and trained to accomplish a task, I think it makes a huge difference, not only while you're in the military, but when you get out of the military and you're on your own, it gives you some good basic fundamental work ethic that makes you much more effective at whatever you might decide that you want to do when you are a civilian again. I just think that it would be good for a lot of young men and women to go into the service and go into the Army. There's an additional benefit now, and that is, there's an additional benefit now, and that is that your college could be paid for. And what better deal is there than having your college paid for and not having that college debt when you finish your schooling, plus you're getting this additional training, you get a chance to see all kinds of places in the world. It's a Pretty good opportunity, I think. That was great, Mr. White. You are one of many who have served our country. And we are very thankful to all the veterans for their service. Thank you.